Oh, thank you, Amy and Joyce, for that, that wonderful song. That was just amazing. Hey, our topic today is, should have seen this coming. Now, there's a lot of things you should have seen coming. Uh, sometimes, though, there are things that you don't necessarily see coming. Uh, like, who ever expects an earthquake? You just don't see that coming, unless there have been some tremors that first came. Uh, how about a hurricane? Well, unless you're following the news and, you know, you've got a meteorologist reporting that, you really may not see that coming. But most likelihood, you would see that coming. One of the things that you could probably see coming is an empty, candy-filled Easter egg, kind of like on the screen. You know that on Easter morning, when the kids get up and they open up those Easter eggs, that they're going to pop that open, and whatever candy is inside, they're going to eat it. You just know it. It's going to be gone, most likely before the day's over. There's certain things you should see coming and some things you just can't see coming. Who would have ever expected the COVID virus to have put us all on a lockdown so that we couldn't even go to church to worship? We just, I mean, who could have seen that coming? We just didn't see that coming. But there are some things that we should see coming, and that's what I want to talk about today. Like the empty Easter egg, they should have seen that Jesus was going to be raised from the dead. You know, the angel will appear eventually in our, our, our text today, and he's going to say, he is not here, he is risen. And they should have seen this coming. The reason I say that is the Jews themselves should have seen this coming. You know, when Jesus performed his first miracle, changing the water to wine, right after that, he went to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, he found that they were making the temple a place of merchandise. He overthrew all the money changers' table. He made a whip and drove out all the animals. And the zeal of the Lord had eaten him up. He was upset about them making that a big business and not actually a place of worship. Right after that, Jesus is confronted by the Jews. And the Jews say to him, and so, show us a sign for the authority of what you're doing. And Jesus answered them and said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They responded to him by saying, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days? But the truth is, he was speaking about the temple of his body. You know, the Jews should have seen this coming because Jesus, from the very beginning of his ministry, told him that he, his body was going to be the temple, that temple of the body was going to be raised from the dead. But they missed that. Now, now the Pharisees also should have seen this coming. We're told that a little later in his ministry, in the book of Matthew, the Pharisees said, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. They always were wanting a sign. Now, a sign is an indicator that you have doubt. They wanted some proof. It was kind of, they were saying, put up or shut up. We want some proof. We don't believe that you are who you say you are. What authority do you have for your preaching? What authority do you have for what you're doing? And Jesus answered them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. You're a bunch of skeptical unbelievers. But no sign will be given you except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Then he goes on and he says, For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now I know there's a lot who have a hard time with this miracle that the Lord performed about Jonah being swallowed by a great fish. Most people think it says a whale, but it's not a whale. It says that the Lord had created or prepared a fish just for that occasion. If you can believe that God created everything, obviously you can believe that the Lord could make one fish to swallow Jonah and keep him swallowed alive for three days and then spit him up on the ground. Jesus says, this is the sign I'm giving to you. I'm not performing some miracle. This is the sign. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it. Jesus is saying, because you don't believe me. You know, when, when Jonah was, so to speak, resurrected out of the great fish and went to Nineveh and preached, the city, they all repented. But in this case, he's saying, I'm going to be resurrected from the dead, and you're not going to believe. He said, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. 
You should mark my words, is what he's saying. I'm going to be raised from the dead, and you should see this coming. Well, not only did the Pharisees not see it coming, but the rock himself did not see it coming. You know who the rock is, little Rocky. You know, his name is Peter. Before he's named Peter, nicknamed by Jesus Rocky, he was called Simon. And Jesus one day is with his disciples and he says to the disciples, who do men say that I am? And they started listing off some of the prophets. And finally, uh, he says, uh, but who do you say that I am? And Peter speaks up for the group and he says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then Jesus calls him, blessed are you, Peter. God has revealed this to you. You didn't get this out of yourself. And you are Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church. Man, the Lord is just speaking to Peter powerfully. So the rock should have known, Rocky, Peter, he should have known what was coming because after Jesus had that experience with him, while the disciples were all there together, he began to immediately teach that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. Now, I like the way it is put in the, in the, the, the Gospel of Mark. Because, uh, and he said this plainly. He said this plainly. How could they have missed it? The Son of Man, he's talking about himself, the Messiah, is going to be rejected, he's going to be killed, he's going to rise again on the third day. He couldn't have made it any plainer. And yet, they should have seen it coming. And yet they did not. Peter instead took Jesus aside, <clears throat> and I jumped to Matthew here, because when he took him aside and rebuked him, this is what Matthew says he actually said. Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. He rebukes Jesus. Here, the rock, you know, he's always the kind of guy that speaks up, acts first, thinks later, but he speaks up and he says, no, you're not, it's not going to happen to you. And Jesus, turning and seeing all the disciples, because they were all there, he rebuked Peter right in front of all of them and said, get Get behind me, Satan, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Here, Peter, he says, upon this rock I'll build my church, the confession that you made, and Peter, I, I just complimented you, I, I've embraced you, but now I'm saying, get you behind me, Satan, because you are not listening to what I'm saying. I'm going to be betrayed, I'm going to be handed over, I am going to be crucified, I'm going to raise from the dead, and you're telling me what I'm not going to do? Peter, Peter! You see, Peter should have seen the resurrection coming. You know, the disciples should have also seen the, the resurrection coming. They should have seen this coming too. It says, as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem for that final, final trek up to Jerusalem, he's not going to leave Jerusalem, he's going to be crucified at Jerusalem. This is his last journey there. He took the 12 disciples aside, and on the way he said to them, see, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles and mock and flog and crucify and he will be raised on the third day. How much plainer can it get? They should have seen this coming. It appears that they just didn't want to see it coming. They just didn't want to believe that it was going to happen. Wishful thinking is always faulty thinking. Rather than just wishing, we should be listening to the very word of God and what God says to us in our lives. They should have seen it coming. Well, then Jesus was crucified. We celebrated that on Good Friday and all the benefits that it has for us. He was crucified, and then they took him down off the cross, and they carried him to another man's tomb, and there they rolled the stone in front of it, and Jesus was buried because he was dead, just as he had predicted, and they should have seen that coming. Now the chief priest uh, sort of, kind of saw it coming because the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and they said, Sir, remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise? Now how did they know that, that he said that? Oh, it was back at the very beginning. Destroy this temple 
and in three days I will raise it up again. Or, or was it at the time where he talked to them about uh, Jonah? Three days, three nights? In any case, they are now charging. Well, he said that he would rise. They kind of sort of see it coming. Not that they believe it, but they're wanting to stop any hoax or imposter. And so therefore, they ask that, that Pilate order that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead and the last fraud be worse than the first. It's at that point that Pilate said to them, oh my goodness, you're worried about a dead man? You have your own guards. You have your own soldiers. They're the, they're the temple guard. Go make the tomb as secure as you can. And so they went, and they made the tomb secure by securing the stone and setting guards around it. And they, they were doing exactly what they were allowed to do. No one really, really saw this coming. The disciples had scattered the chief priests and the Pharisees didn't believe him, just thought he was an imposter, and they were trying to do it just to protect that perhaps there might be a hoax pulled off. No one really saw what was coming next. No one saw that there would be an earthquake. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, that would be Sunday. This is Easter Sunday morning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Everything is shaking. I sometimes like to think that's the exact moment when the angel sent from God to roll away the stone landed. And as he landed, the whole earth is shaking because he goes over the angel and the angel of the Lord when he descends came down and he rolled back the stone and then he sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. In fact, the, the Luke account says that there was more than one. These angels that looked like men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how you were told this while he was still a lot in Galilee? He's saying, whoa, don't you remember? He'd been telling you all along the way he would be handed over to the Jews and they'd be handed over to the Gentiles. He would be beaten and flogged and crucified and then he would on the third day raise from the dead. Haven't you been paying attention? Don't you remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? Remember how he told you that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men? That how he must be crucified? And that how he must rise on the third day? And all of a sudden, they remembered his words. All of a sudden, they remembered that Jesus Christ was alive. Now, of course, we didn't see it coming. That's because it happened way before us. It happened thousands of years before us. We have a totally different perspective. While they were looking forward to it, we are looking backwards at it. And so it's not for us to say, boy, I didn't see this coming. That's not the question for us. You see, the question is not, did you see this coming? The question for us is, but do you believe it happened? You see, those disciples back then did not see it coming. They did not see it coming because they did not believe it was coming. Now in our age, it's not do we see it coming. We've got to look back and say, do we actually believe it happened? that Jesus Christ literally, bodily, rose from the dead. Then he li lived on earth for 40 more days. Then he ascended into heaven, and he, he is seated at the right hand of the Father on high. You see, it's important. This is so important. Your life, your eternal life depends on this. In John 3.18, it says this, Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. You stand condemned unless you believe. And when you believe, you are no longer condemned. See, Romans, it says this. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, 
you will be saved. I love this verse. Some people make it to heaven by just 12 inches. Others miss heaven by 12 inches. And the distance is between your head and your heart. Many people know the story in their head, but they've never believed in Jesus, that he died for their sins, was buried, and he rose again the third day for their sins. They have not made him their Savior and Lord, so they've missed it. They've only believed in their head and not in their heart. Not in their heart. This is so important because your eternal life, your eternal salvation depends on it. Perhaps you're thinking at this point, wow, I didn't see that one coming. You mean, I must believe that Jesus rose from the dead, confess him to be Lord in order to be saved? And the answer is to that, yes. 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 You must believe that Jesus Christ is alive and he is, he is the resurrected Lord. Why not do that right now and be eternally secure? How do you do that? You do that in prayer. You just pray and you call upon him as the resurrected one and you will be saved. Let's do that now. Let's pray. Father in heaven, if there's someone who is just watching and viewing this service, I pray, Father, that if they don't know Christ, that right now they would call out and say, I believe in the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ who was, died for my sins, was buried and rose again that I might have life eternal. Right now I call upon him and say, Lord, save me. And we know, Lord, anyone who will call out upon the name of the Lord, they will be saved. Save, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen.